Hey guys, Steve here from Bloom Audio. Today we're going to talk about digital to analog converters, commonly called in audiophile jargon, DACs. DACs are frequently advertised with claims like, we'll accept almost any input and make it sound better, or instantly improves audio fidelity. And it seems like any music lover would want to buy that right away and improve their audio fidelity and make their music sound better. But are these claims true? And how does it work? So this week, we're going to talk about what a DAC does and whether or not it can make any difference in the quality of your music. So what does a DAC do? Basically, it takes ones and zeros and turns them into an analog sound wave that can be output by speakers or headphones. If you're at least as old as me, you might remember the sound of dial-up internet. That's the sound of two digital devices negotiating a connection that is transmitted in an analog fashion over the phone line. And it's not too far off from what your digital audio files would sound like if you tried to output them directly without converting to analog first. Your DAC is the difference between and. At this point, you may be thinking, wait, how have I been listening to music this whole time without it sounding like dubstep if I don't have a DAC? That's the thing. You have a DAC. You probably have many of them. Any device that plays digital music, a CD player, DVD player, MP3 player, computer, phone, basically anything with a headphone jack, speaker output, RCA, or the like, has a DAC in it. The problem is that most of those DACs aren't very good. If you've ever had a discussion with an analog or vinyl aficionado, they've probably explained to you that analog music, real analog music on vinyl, uh, in particular, is superior because the analog has the full sound waveform in completion, while the digital version is basically just a series of points, dots, that attempt to reconstruct the original analog form that's smooth and complete, and that basically no matter how many points you have, it's still not the complete original analog signal as we would hear a sound wave. So the difference between DACs is how well they reconstruct the complete waveform from the digital point of reference. While the DAC in an old portable CD player might simply connect the dots, spit out a waveform, more advanced DACs use complicated algorithms to carefully reconstruct the sort of waveform that would have existed between the points of reference that the digital signal provides. So if you do want to get the best quality out of your music collection, you're going to need a good DAC. Generally speaking, your signal path looks something like this. Source audio outputs to the DAC, which outputs to your amp, which outputs to your headphones or speakers. Each of these pieces plays a big role in your sound. Source audio is in some ways the most important. Uh, low quality files aren't going to sound good no matter what kind of DAC or amp you're using. And at the same time, if you've got good quality files and a top tier headphone amp, but you're using your phone as a DAC, it's not going to be able to deliver the full resolution of the files to the fullest of what your headphone amp or the headphones can do. And of course, you could have you know, DSD 512 audio uh, running into a $10,000 cord Dave. But if you plug the $3 headphones that you got at five below into that, you're probably going to miss out on a lot of the hard work the rest of that signal chain is doing. Now that you've been thoroughly convinced with facts, logic, and reason to buy a DAC, you'll need to figure out what kind of DAC is going to work the best for you. If you've got a large space for a big two-channel system, your DAC options are going to be different than 
if you just want to get better quality from the IEMs that you've got plugged into your phone right now. Uh, that also might determine if you want a true standalone DAC, uh, like the Burson Composer over here or the Chord Cutest, or some kind of DAC amp combo, whether it's something ultra portable or something in between that combines the functions of a DAC and an amp. Many devices that are marketed as DACs are actually DAC amp combos to begin with, which provide some level of amplification above line level for you to list, plug in headphones and listen directly through the device. In addition to the differences in size and form factor in whether it's a standalone DAC or a DAC combined with an amp, um, there are deep technical differences between a lot of DACs as well. Uh, there are two types of DACs most common in audiophile settings. One is called a Delta Sigma DAC. Um, this is most of your on-chip uh, DACs that you think of, AKM, ESS, Sabre, and other things you might have seen listed. Um, you know, what's in most i5, Burson, and other devices. Uh, that's, that's a Delta Sigma DAC. The other kind is an FPGA DAC, or Field Programmable Gate Array. Um, these are gaining popularity. Cord Electronics is a big proponent of the FPGA DACs. So in practical terms, the difference between different DAC chips is going to largely come down to your ears and your personal preferences. Some people might love the smoother, more relaxed sound of the Burr Brown chips that iFi puts in a lot of their products, while others might like the crystal clear, almost too clear sound of chords, FPGA DACs, or maybe you like something in between, uh, like the more forward energetic sound of a Burson DAC or any other number of options that are out there. You really just need to let your ears decide uh, what you think sounds best. When you're purchasing a DAC, you also need to consider the whole device and not just the basic digital to analog conversion process. So as an example here, uh, this Burson Composer has Bluetooth support and RCA and XLR outputs. Maybe some of those are something that's really important to you. On the other hand, this iFi uh, doesn't have the Bluetooth capabilities or the same flexibility in inputs and outputs. However, it does have MQA support built in. Or maybe something like the Ashtel and Kern uh, USB DAC or the Dragonfly is going to get you by having almost zero footprint when it's plugged into your phone. There's a lot of different options and a lot of different aspects to each DAC beyond just its basic capabilities to turn a digital file into an analog output that you'll need to keep in mind. Something you should know about me is that I was always a little bit of an analog snob. That guy I mentioned earlier talking about how analog is superior to digital and digital can never fully recreate the true waveform in the way that Final can, that's me. But here's the thing. The advancements that have happened with DAX and high-res formats over the last decade have really sold me on digital music. With MP3s and iPods, there was a clear case for traditional analog formats. With the availability of high-res files from streaming services like Kobuz and the ability to download even higher-res files and the incredibly advanced processing in modern DACs. I've gone from a digital music skeptic to a true believer. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and then head over to bloomaudio.com to check out our selection of DACs and amps. And we'll be back soon with more hi-fi personal audio content.